All right, I'm going to talk today about the confident Christian. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. There is a certain level of confidence that comes from understanding what the Bible says and believing the record, which we'll get into later. And I realize that there's a sinful nature there too, the flesh. You're not to have any confidence in the flesh. I'm aware of that. You don't say, well, I'm being used of the Lord because I'm very good looking or I'm incredibly intelligent or, you know, very successful. I have a lot of money. That's confidence in the flesh. Um, that's sinful. That's pride, right? But there's a confidence that comes from a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me show you that. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, down through verse 11. For we know... Well, no, you, you, you can't know. You can't know for sure until you die. You'll get told that by people. Religious people, they don't know for sure. They have places like purgatory where you go and you just kind of work out the details of your salvation before getting into heaven and, and you just kind of get purified a little bit more. No, we know. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, Somebody comes and they shoot me in the next five minutes. I can say that I know right now, I know if this is dissolved, if I die, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. I'm going to live forever. I'm going to go to a perfect place. I am saved. I am born again. I am part of the body of Christ. I have heaven to look forward to when I die. You say, well, you can't possibly... I can know it. And you should know it too as a Christian. Verse 2, For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Stop there again. Uh, do you ever groan sometimes? Just, you know, you wake up, you got a headache, you get out of bed, you step up, and you, you know, some of you younger people don't know about this yet, you know, but those of us who are older and getting older all the time and more gray hairs all the time and, and you know, that have just beat our bodies to oblivion in, in our younger days with, you know, motorcycling and logging and all the other fun stuff that I used to do. And now I get up out of bed and I, you know, especially when it gets colder and I, oh man, my back, oh, my knee, knees are sore and my, you know, just stiff and you, uh, you know, do you ever groan? Just go, uh, you know, wake up in the morning, you had a terrible night of sleep and you go, Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I don't even know where that dream came from. <laughs> you know, in this we groan. Can you relate? You know, you go out to the store and you walk in there and there's some stinking classic rock music song or some other song that you used to listen to as a lost person. You go, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah, you can relate. Verse three, if so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Okay, talking about in your own self-righteousness there. In other words, a lot more I could say about that. But um, Verse 4, For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that would we, we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Isn't that funny? You say, boy, well, I got a good life now. I enjoy my life now. Paul says, uh, no, actually you just have mortality there. You're mortal. You don't actually have life yet. You're just a mortal man or a mortal woman. Hmm. Kind of an interesting thing. Life doesn't begin on, at uh, 40 or 50. Life begins in eternity. You get there, get up out of bed if they have beds in heaven, you know. You get up, probably not because there's no night there, but, you know, just to prove my point here, you get up out of bed, zip. No soreness in my knees, huh? Oh, wow, boy, I feel pretty good, you know. Look in the mirror and look the same as I did yesterday. I guess I'll look like this forever. <laughs> Life begins. Verse 5, Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. You know, when you start talking about heaven, don't you start to feel excited? You know, even if you've been groaning all day and just, oh, the, you know, this is bad and that's bad and, oh, I got a flat tire and, oh, you know, this bill just came, oh, you know. But you start talking about heaven. What's it going to be like when the rapture happens, when we get called up to be with the Lord in the air and we see Jesus for the first time and there's all the saints around you? You know, you get excited. 
What is it? It's the earnest of the Spirit. Unless you're a post-tribber, then you come out and you say, well, you know, oh, we're not going to make it, or some people aren't going to be able to get through, and the Antichrist is coming soon, and we're all going to go into the New World Order. <laughs> earnest of the Spirit, boy, yeah, buddy. Verse 6, Therefore we are always confident. Always? Confident? Huh. Knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. We're always confident. Hmm. Should you be a confident Christian? Well, in spiritual things, yes. Not in, uh, I've got a lot of money saved up and I'm very much prepared for the future and I have gold and silver just in case the cash collapses. And, and uh, you know, that's confidence in the flesh. Confident as a Christian, the confident Christian, in other words, looks out to the future and they say, you know what, the pains that I'm feeling, the aches that I'm feeling, the tiredness, the weakness, the, the just sorrow, the depression, sleepless nights, whatever, it's all going to be over one day. This earthly tabernacle, this body is going to be dissolved and I'm going to become truly the new creature. Not just here on the earth like that. You're going to become truly a incorruptible being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful day that's going to be. And it should give you confidence as a Christian. Because no matter what bad thing happens to you here in this life, you still have that confidence. It's going to be better in heaven. Verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Can you tell me exactly how things are going to look in heaven? No. Can I tell you? No. We walk by faith, not by sight. Verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Yeah. If you're saved, you'll get that. No matter how good things get in my life, I can tell you right now, I'd rather be with the Lord than be here on this earth. I have responsibilities. I have a wife. I have a son. I have ministry. I have you out there, the, the you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I have a lot of things to do. Very busy. But uh, if the Lord said, you want to go home? Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's go. Absolutely. Verse 9. Wherefore, we labor. We have confidence as a Christian, and that causes us to labor. Why? Because this life isn't it. You have responsibilities, certainly. I was just talking about some of them that I have. I have a lot of responsibilities that are here, physical responsibilities. But it, I can't go too long without preaching the Word or witnessing to somebody or giving out gospel tracts or whatever else. I can't go too long before I start to really feel bad. I need to labor. Always remembering, we need to labor for what's up there, what matters, eternal things. And the old saying goes, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. Yeah. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Can you imagine getting to heaven someday and having the Lord Jesus Christ, God of heaven and earth, and He says to you, well done, thou good and faithful servant? And he doesn't kind of, you know, come on over here. I'll just, you know, hey, you did a pretty good job. you know. So, no, in front of all the angels, all the heavenly host, everything. And I believe Satan's actually going to be there during the judgment seat of Christ as well because he doesn't get kicked out till halfway through the time of Jacob's trouble, Revelation chapter 12, which is rather interesting. And, you know, he's probably going to be over there just gritting his teeth and things. And the Lord's going to, he's not going to say, well done. You know, he's probably going to say, well done, thou good and faithful, you know, servant. He's going to make a big deal about it. We may be accepted of Him. Hmm. Verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. You know, they, uh, again, another whole debate thing there is the thing of the judgment seat of Christ are your it, sins brought up there. Well, your sins are judged at Calvary, but there's a sense in which your sins are brought up there. Notice it says, whether it be good or bad. 
If you waste your life away serving your flesh, the wood, hay, stubble that's mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you do that, well, that stuff's going to be brought up. The Lord's going to say, uh, boy, you know, there's a, some real good chances to track down there. Um, what were you doing then? Oh, that whole, all those hours? Oh, you were playing a video game. That's right. Uh, you could have at least read my word. Uh, but you had to get to the next level there. Um, there was that opportunity. Somebody said something about, I just wish I knew what life was about. And you just kind of smiled and, yeah, yeah, you know, well, good luck on that. Uh, how much money did you spend again on the new vehicle and mortgage and the other? Uh-oh. And we, you know, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody because I got plenty of right here. Issues right here. Times I've kept my mouth shut when I should have witnessed. Times I've wasted time when I should have been serving the Lord. Uh, if the Lord ever brings up my YouTube viewing history, you know, and things and how much of it has actually been ministry related and whatever else and how much is researching and things of things of the world and whatever. I don't watch, you know, pornographic stuff or anything, but the point is just the history of this and the history of that. I like history things and whatever. But, the, you know, the Lord convicts me sometimes, just says, what are you doing? How much of this is really helping you in the ministry? How much of this is really for me? And, and we all have to judge ourselves. Verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. We serve a God that's going to burn people for all of eternity for rejecting Jesus Christ. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Hey, um, does the Lord have some plans for this world that are going to be uh, the book of Revelation coming to pass? Yes. Is it going to be a terrible time? Yes. Should we do our best to witness to people? I think you know the answer to that. Yeah. You say, but but brother, I, I'm not sure. You're not sure? Can't we have a confidence? Can't we be confident Christians? And yet to struggle with the flesh, brethren. And I, you know, I'm preaching this sermon to myself. Lord will put these sermons, you know, into my mind and things, and hey, I'd like you to preach on that. And okay, Lord, and, and I'm starting to do the notes for it. I'm going. Ooh, you know, this is kind of kicking me too here a little bit, you know, and kind of the Holy Spirit saying, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> um, the Bible's a double-edged sword, okay? And I don't believe it has a handle on it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Almost sometimes I think that way. You know, it's you hold on to the Bible, onto the Scripture, you can't hold on to this book without it cutting you. And all of a sudden you'll be going through there and you'll be going, oh yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm not guilty of that and I'm not guilty of this. I'm doing that one and I know I'm going to get rewards for that. And then all of a sudden, uh, and you run into something like this. How often do you look at people out in the world and think there's a soul going to hell? What can I do to try to witness to that person? What can I do to try to make them think about eternity? Um, is this music I'm listening to, is it pleasing to the Lord? Is that video that I'm watching, is it necessary? Is it expedient? All things are lawful for me. Sure, I understand that. But is it expedient? Is it going to help you in your relationship with the Lord? Is it going to help you to witness to people? Or is it just entertainment? You know what, what entertainment is? You're pleasing yourself. I, you know, you judge yourself. I can't get into your personal business. I mean, I've, I've dealt with people for years and years and years, and there's been so many people I've thought, hey, you know, we got a good Bible believer here, and a little time goes by, and phew, off they go, and they were fake the whole time. You know, I mean, I, and you say, well, that's why you need to be in a good local church and deal with people and face-to-face -face and things like this. They can fake you out there just as good. I've seen that too. 
I've seen people, I thought, man, a strong Christian and just like that. I hear they left their wife, they're off with some girl that's half their age or something. And I'm, what? You know? Yeah. It comes right down to it, brethren. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in other people's bodies because you can judge other Christians and say, well, they did, they did. No, it says in his body. You are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I am going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to have to give an account. You say, well, but, but you know, I wasn't really sure if I should. Maybe it's because you're not a very confident Christian. Maybe it's because you've taken your eyes off the Lord and off of eternal things. And you start to look at the things of the world. Because that will do it to you every single time. You start to think about the things of the world. Man, I'm really kicking myself today. I'm just, I'm going through this. I'm thinking, Ugh. We must examine ourselves with the Word of God. And when we're not right, we have to say, you know what? I need to get back on track. And that's the beautiful thing about our relationship to Jesus Christ. It's new all the time. We are new creatures all the time. All things will become new. You can start over today. Get back in fellowship with the Lord if, you've, if you're really far out there and things. If your love for the Lord just kind of cooled down a little bit, pray about that thing. Get back in the Word. You know, but brethren, our life is to be lived for Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to be thinking about eternal things. And that's supposed to give us that confidence that we need as a Christian. You're not going to ever waste your time putting gospel tracts out. Think about that. You're going to waste your time on the internet sometimes. Even if you go on to the internet sometimes and you, you have the best of motives and everything else, all of a sudden you got to update the stupid thing. There are new Windows updates available. And you, uh, you, know, and you got to do the updates and then, it, and then something goes wrong and it messes up some other kind of program. And then you got to go back into System Restore and get back to the way things were. And, it, and you spend two, three hours just fixing your computer when you just wanted to check email or something like this. You will waste time, many times, doing the things in this world. You'll want to go to some place and whatever else, and you want to, you know, whatever. You get a vehicle problems, or you get late, or somebody pulls out in front of you and goes 10 miles an hour under the speed limit. But you can never waste your time serving Jesus Christ. You're never going to waste your time reading the Bible. You're never going to waste your time listening to hymns, talking to people about Jesus Christ putting gospel tracts out there in strategic locations or handing them to people, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, listening to preaching, listening to teaching, sharing it with other people. You can't waste your time doing that. And you should do it because you have confidence as a Christian that it's going to mean something in eternity. But let's continue. Philippians chapter 1. Go there next. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I love that, the day of Jesus Christ. I believe it's a you know, reference to the catching up when we actually see Jesus Christ. That's the day of Jesus Christ there. And I'm confident that these things that I preach to you and I tell you to continue in the King James Bible, reading it, studying it, believing it, you know, and witnessing to people and things like that, I can have confidence knowing that's going to keep you straight until the day of Jesus Christ. You want some good advice? You know? How can I avoid getting messed up in my life and whatever else? Pray, read your Bible, witness to people, listen to the right kind of music, sanctify things out of your life that the Holy Spirit convicts you of. Follow the Scriptures. There. That'll keep you in good shape until the day of Jesus Christ. And I can have confidence saying that. Because I have the authority to. Not, I have the authority here my education, my credentials. There's the authority. 
You say, well, Peter Ruckman, I don't care what Peter Ruckman said. I don't care what whoever said. That's the authority. Not Brian Denlinger, not Peter Ruckman, not whoever. The Word of God. That's where your confidence comes from. The promises, standing on the promises. Verse 7, Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Love in judgment? Oh, you're so judgmental. How could you judge things? Because I'm a confident Christian. Because I can have confidence because I have an authoritative standard. And I can judge you according to the pages of the Scripture. And I can have that confidence to do that. Why? Because I love you. When I speak harshly against sin, it's because I have the standard to do so, number one, but because I love you. I attack video games. Why? Because I went through that stuff in my past, and I wasted a lot of time, even after I was saved. I love people. I'll judge that thing. I can attack whatever, you know, you go down through the list. Verse 8, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. We read that. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Hmm. Read that earlier. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, under the glory and praise of God. But I would... Ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather under the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. One thing I hope you understand if you're watching this ministry, um, there's a lot of people that don't like me very much, okay? <laughs> Now, I've never been in prison, right? But I certainly have been attacked um, on a pretty high level. I mean, there's a lot of videos attacking me and cutting up my videos and making me say things I didn't say. And, and, you know, I've made mistakes and I've admitted to making mistakes, but people don't care and they say, oh, look, there's a video exposing Brian. And look at the hypocrite and think, yeah, I've been a hypocrite. Okay, did you hear me? I said, I've been a hypocrite different times. I've made mistakes and I've come out and I've said, hey, I'm sorry about that. I made a mistake. People don't care. They just want to come out and they want to just blast me and attack me and destroy my whole ministry because of a few things they disagree with. You know? And yet, what I want you, the viewer, to understand is um, I'm still here. I'm still preaching. Why? Because I'm confident. And I'll get that from people that say, Brian Dunlinger judges people's salvation. Yeah, you know why? Because I have a standard with which I can do it. I'm confident that I have the right standard, this King James Bible. And I pray that, uh, you know, if you learn anything from this ministry, you'll learn that, hey, Brother Brian loves the Lord and he loves his word and he's confident and he's continuing. And you know what? If he can go through that stuff, I can go through the things I'm going through. And you can. I'm not ultra strong and ultra powerful and I'm just, uh, you know, impervious to pain and whatever else and I don't get bothered by things. Uh, I have feelings and I have emotions and whatever else. But uh, you can look at this ministry and you can say, hey, you know what? In spite of what people say about Brother Brian, he's still here. He's still sticking with it. A lot of people would have quit a long time ago. But by the grace of God and, and it's His strength and the prayers of God's people, I'm still here. And I'm still preaching the same things that I've preached for many years. And I'll admit to my mistakes when I make them. Not many other people will do that. They get cornered. They get, they get proved to be a, a liar and a hypocrite and whatever else. They are going to come out and say, hey, I'm wrong. I'm sorry about that. There's been numerous occasions where I've done that. I do hope that you are confident in the things of the Lord. And if you 
look to me as an example of that and things and say, hey, Brother Brian, he's been attacked. I'm getting attacked. I've been attacked on his level. I mean, some of you, you know, you, you come out and you don't really have much of a channel as far as putting out videos and whatever else. And some of you, you know, you'll, Lord will tell you to put out a, a video or something and you do and you get, you all of a sudden you get the wolves just attacking you and you say, my word, I got, you know, 10 people attacking me in the comments or something. Well, you know, then you look at my channel and you say, oh, you know, how on earth can Brother Ryan take this thing? I've gotten that from a lot of people. I don't know how you can take it. Oh, uh, well, you know, this is what I'm called to do. Um, but I pray that this, that I go through, helps you to be a little bit more confident as a Christian. I mean, if I was, if I was looking for popularity and whatever else, trying to start my own cult and whatever else, I would have quit a long time ago. All right. <laughs> the reason I continue is because I'm confident that there are promises in this book right here that say I'm going to be rewarded for what I've gone through and rewarded for taking the kind of stands that I take. I have that confidence. 1 John. Go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 10 through 15. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. The record? Hmm. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You say, what's this record all about? It's, it's the internal witness, the burning bosom that you get when you join the Mormon church or eat at Taco Bell or something, you know. <laughs> A little joke there. Um, what's the record? Verse 13. These things have I written. Do you have the Word of God? The written Word of God in a perfect form today? Well, no, only the originals were inspired then you can't claim verse 13. You need written scriptures to know that you have eternal life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Look at the next verse. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. Do you believe that if you call upon the Lord to save you, do you believe he'll hear you? Mm -hmm. Do you believe after that that you can talk to him as your heavenly father after he saves you? Yeah, I do. I have that confidence. What's it based on? Feelings? Written scripture. You can be a confident Christian if you believe the book that you hold in your hands is actually God's word. You can have confidence as a Christian. You can know that you're going to heaven when you die. And you can have confidence enough to judge other people. You can look at Joel Olstein and you can say, okay, uses new versions, he's all about money, faker than a $3 bill, prosperity gospel, no repentance, no holiness, no whatever, uh, lost. You say, well, how do you know that? Because I have confidence in the written scriptures. Billy Graham. I've seen so many people call themselves Bible believers and they come out and they say, well, Billy Graham, he had some issues, but I think he led a lot of people to the Lord. Uh, okay, Billy Graham, the same guy that said that the Pope is my friend. Personal meetings with Pope John Paul II. Good buddy with Bill Clinton. Bill and Hillary Clinton. Billy Graham, the guy that comes out and says, I think that all people are going to go to heaven, whether they're atheist or not, as long as they believe in God, you know, and whatever, with Robert Schuller. Both high-level Masons, you know, Schuller and Billy Graham. I, I, th I think that Billy Graham, I think, you know, he, has, he had some issues, but I think he was saved. What? Do you have confidence based on the book? 
I can confidently say that Billy Graham is burning in hell right now. No problem. You say, well, well, how can you know that? Because he didn't do things God's way. He didn't live according to this book. What he preached. You know, that, I remember they asked him too, what about female preachers? He said, well, that depends on who I'm talking to, who I'm preaching to. What about purgatory? I don't really know for sure. There's some debate about that. And but this is a great Bible teacher and preacher and everything else. Yeah, uh-huh. Lost. When you have confidence in the book and you know what the book says, you can judge confidently. I mean, I'll grant you there are some people you just kind of have to look at them and you think, okay, they make the right profession. They, but, you know, their deeds are, some of their deeds are kind of, eh, you know, are they new Christians? Are they just kind of, do they not know? Or, you know, and you just kind of say, I'll get back to you later, you know. I don't know. But uh, there are certain people that you can just flat out say, absolutely not, they're not saved. Definitely not. These people are preaching a false gospel. Just as simple as that. Uh, can you live as a, Christ, a confident Christian? Yeah. Should you live as a confident Christian? Absolutely. Because you see, you need to think about eternal things. And if you're going around and you're just vague and ambiguous and just kind of trying to please everybody, you're not a confident Christian and you're not going to be getting many uh, rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Um, the Lord calls Christians to be confident uh, and that means you're going to be going against the flow of modern society. Uh, modern society doesn't want confident people in the sense of spiritually speaking. People that are uh, dogmatic that would go around and say, those people over there are going to hell. Why? Because the Bible says so. Well, I mean, can we really say for sure? Do we really? Have you ever seen hell? And think, the Bible says that hell is a lake of fire. It's, well, hell, then you get the lake of fire. But the Bible says that there's eternal burning. And you burn and you burn and you burn and it's eternal torment and things like that. I, I have confidence. You see, the world hates that. Um, well, I think that we're all working our... You know, way to the same place. I think that there will be Muslims in heaven, and I think that there will be Buddhists. And no, the Bible says there is none other, none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the only way to heaven. You say, well, but I think Muhammad, Muhammad's in hell burning. How do you know? Didn't believe in Jesus. Well, certainly the Pope. Nope, he's in hell burning. Didn't believe in Jesus. He believed that he could eat Jesus and get to heaven that way and go through purgatory first. Nope, sorry. Be a confident Christian. Because when you are, and when you don't waste your time on things that are not expedient, they might be lawful, but they're not expedient, and you don't waste your time on that stuff, and you say, I don't want that stuff in my life anymore. I want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with my life. And you have that confidence, this is going to be great in eternity. And you know what? Even if they dissolve this earthly tabernacle, even if somebody kills me because they get so angry, I'm going to heaven. I get to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. It's far better than what I have right now. But the flesh fights. All of us. We all go through it. We all go through those times when the flesh is just fighting and you just want to fit in with the world and you just want to, you know, what do they say, uh, uh, go along to get along or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But as Christians, we're supposed to have that level of confidence. So I pray that this sermon has been a conviction to you. It has been to me. Um, it's very easy to get sidetracked with the things of the world. But we have to remember that we are accountable to God and that uh, what we do for Him is all that's going to matter in eternity. That's going to be it. Uh, just going to say a few things here about the plans of the ministry real quickly in closing. Um, but just really want to thank again. I always like to thank people for donating to the ministry, keeping us going, and, and of course for people's prayers. Uh, that really, it's always the most important thing, um, people praying for us. Um, that's really, really important. Please pray for us every day. Uh, we need it. We go through some rough stuff sometimes. But uh, just a quick little ministry update here, announcement, whatever you want to say. Um, 
the outdoor sermons, the high definition type of thing. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be basically what my plans are for now. Not sure how everything's going to work out. I'm going to be doing up until the end of 2018. That's going to go on to the external hard drive project thing. I'd like to try and get them out on the website in 2019. Um, and then I'm going to be kind of restarting the ministry at that point in time. Um, not sure what all the Lord wants for me. It's, you know, it's still two months away, essentially. A little less than two months now. It's the 2nd of November as I'm recording this. Um, but uh, the outdoor sermons, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break from that because we're, right now we're kind of transitioning between, you know, the leaves are all off the trees for the most part. Uh, we have large trees up here, L-A-R-C-H. You know, I'm not being Dutchy and saying large differently. <laughs> but we have trees called larch trees, and they turn bright yellow. They're a, they're a kind of a coniferous tree. They're, they're not like a hardwood tree. They're, they're kind of like a pine or a spruce or a fir tree, and really pretty. But, um, you know, just it's been raining a lot lately, and I don't really do a lot of sermons outside in the rain for obvious reasons. You know, that and that, you know, kind of hard to preach in the rain. Um, but we will be, I'm going to be doing some sermons and preaching this year in the snow and uh, out in the winter scenes and everything else. And we're going to be coming out with some new um, video intro type of stuff and whatever else. And uh, going to also be, you know, had a brother um, send me a newer version of the movie studio, the Vegas, Sony Vegas movie studio stuff. And so I'm going to be trying to get, you know, bring out my videos in actual 4K. So i got to learn that new stuff and everything. You know, it's a, I've stuck with an older version of Sony Vegas for many years because I'm comfortable with that. But uh, I have some new things to learn and whatever. So over the next course of two months, a lot of the studies are probably just going to be done inside. Might do some things outside. But um, I'm just going to kind of try to finish up. Uh, the year 2018, because that way it's 10 years of YouTube. Um, technically, November of t uh, 2008 is when I joined YouTube. So here we are 10 years later, but we'll do one month further into it, December 2018. When the year ends, then that's going to be it for the external hard drive project. And then <clears throat> when I come out with the um, that external hard drive thing in the future, uh, then it'll, it'll all be available. 10 years and one month worth of videos. Uh, it's a lot of stuff um, that'll be coming out there. So that's the plans for now, just to let everybody kind of know. Um, we're still got a lot of work to do. Um, have jury duty here this coming week. Uh, so it's kind of weird here in Maine, as I said. If you haven't seen the video, um, they did, you know, basically have three days where you have to go in for jury selection. Um, two in early October, and then one in November 7th. So, kind of weird, but uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that I have going on offline, so I'm um, just real, real busy. Um, so, I can't always get back to people right away, but I try my best to do that. But So that's a little ministry update there. Again, um, just please keep us in your prayers. I think that's going to be it. So... Exciting plans for the future, and uh, looking forward to, to doing a lot of these new ideas and, and whatnot. So I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.